Good morning, Mike. I just want to do a sound check here. We got you, Mark. The broadcast of the regular meeting of the Minneapolis City Council will now begin. Thank you, good morning. My name is Lisa Bender. I'm the president of the Minneapolis City Council. I'm going to call to order this regular meeting for Friday, February 26th. Before we proceed, I'll note that we have remote participation by council members and city staff as authorized under the provisions of Minnesota Open Meeting Law, section 13D.021, due to, due to the declared state of local health emergency. At this time, I'll ask the clerk to call the roll to verify the presence of a quorum. Council Member Reich. Present. Council Member Fletcher. Here. Council Member Schrader. Here. Council Member Osman. Council Member Cunningham. Council Member Ellison. Present. Councilmember Goodman. Present. Councilmember Johnson. Present. Councilmember Palmasano. Councilmember Gordon. Councilmember Cano. Here. Councilmember Osman. Councilmember Cunningham. Councilmember Palmasano. Councilmember Gordon. Vice President Jenkins. Present. President Bender. Here. There are nine members present. Let the record be talking. This is Councilmember Palmasano. I'm here as well. Sorry about that. Thank you, Councilmember. Let the record reflect that we do have a quorum. The agenda is before us. Are there any amendments to the agenda today? I'll note that we have been joined by Councilmember Osman. Here we know amendments may have a motion to adopt the agenda. So moved. Second. The clerk will call the roll. Councilmember Reich. Aye. Councilmember Fletcher. Aye. Councilmember Schrader. Aye. Councilmember Osman. Councilmember Cunningham. Aye. Councilmember Ellison. Aye. Councilmember Goodman. Aye. Councilmember Johnson. Aye. Councilmember Palmasano. Aye. Councilmember Gordon. Councilmember Cano. Aye. Councilmember Osman. Aye. Councilmember Gordon. Vice President Jenkins. Aye. President Bender. Aye. There are 12 ayes. That carries and the agenda is adopted. We have the minutes from our regular meeting of February 12th for acceptance. May I have a motion to accept those minutes? So moved, Madam President. Second. The clerk will call the roll. Councilmember Reich. Aye. Councilmember Fletcher. Aye. Councilmember Schrader. Aye. Councilmember Osman. Aye. Councilmember Cunningham. Aye. Councilmember Ellison. Aye. Councilmember Goodman. Aye. Councilmember Johnson. Aye. Councilmember Palmasano. Aye. Councilmember Gordon. Councilmember Cano. Aye. Councilmember Gordon. Vice President Jenkins. Aye. President Bender. Aye. There are 12 ayes. That carries. And those are adopted. Next, we have the referral of petitions, communications, and reports to the proper committees. May I have that motion, please? So moved. Second. The clerk will call the roll. 
Council Member Reich. Aye. Council Member Fletcher. Aye. Council Member Schrader. Aye. Council Member Osman. Aye. Council Member Cunningham. Aye. Council Member Ellison. Aye. Council Member Goodman. Aye. Council Member Johnson. Aye. Council Member Palmasano. Aye. Council Member Gordon. Councilmember Cano. Aye. Councilmember Gordon. Vice President Jenkins. Aye. De President Bender. Aye. There are 12 ayes. That carries and those matters are referred. Today is, um, as we begin our meeting today, uh, we will pause as we have for each of our council meetings through Black History Month to learn a little of our history as it relates to African Americans in um, the United States. And so today I wanted to share some information from a report that my fourth grader did for Black History Month. Um, and she's one of many MPS students in our schools who are learning about Black History Month and also living through a time of great significance for civil rights and for Black justice. Um, so uh, my fourth grader wrote uh, a little history of Jane Bolin, who was the first Black woman judge in American history. Um, she was born in Poughkeepsie, New York in April uh, on April 11th of 1908, the youngest of four children. Her mom died when she was really young, which helped shape her life. Um, and she was also really impacted by images of lynchings that she saw as a young child. Um, Jane was uh, graduated from um, college just, um, or she went to college just four years after women received the right to vote. She then went on to Yale Law School and became the first black woman to graduate from the Yale Law School, graduating at the top of her class. And then in 1939, Jane Bolin became the first black woman judge in United States history. Um, she had an incredible career, uh, living to be 98 years old. Um, and together, my fourth grader and I looked at her life in the context of voting rights. Um, again, acknowledging uh, today is actually the, the anniversary of the passage of the 15th Amendment. Um, then in, in uh, 1869, um, then uh, the women's right to vote in 1920. But of course, um, many struggles continued for full voting rights. They continue today. Um, so I just want to acknowledge all the kids in our schools who are learning about their history and revisiting history from the lens of Black history. Um, thank you to our uh, fire chief who's challenged us to start each meeting with this acknowledgement of Black, Black History Month. With that, uh, we have new business as our first item. The first item under new business is the mayor's regular status report on the state of our local health emergency. Mayor Fry will not be joining us today. And so um, we have that report in writing. I can pause and see if there are any questions for staff related to the uh, local health emergency declaration. Seeing none, we will receive and file that report. Um, we do have an amendment to our resolution, um, which I will take up in just a moment um, because we ha also have two honorary resolutions as we begin our meeting today. And I want to make sure we're able to acknowledge the guests who may have joined us for those. So first, uh, we will take up the, um, I'm actually going to take up Councilmember Osman's item first. Um, so I'll recognize Councilmember Osman. Um, this will be a presentation of the resolution that we adopted at the Policy and Government Oversight Committee meeting on Wednesday. Council Member Osman. Yes. Sorry. Yeah, th thank you, Madam President. I really appreciate. Uh, uh, just wanted to uh, bring this out. Uh, I talked about this on Wednesday. Uh, this resolution. It's uh, to support the Oromo and the Tigrayan community in in uh, in Minneapolis and around the world. And uh, I want to take the time to highlight that uh, what's happening in Ethiopia uh, 
it's uh, it's something that uh, we should be all aware of. So as the resolution reads, uh, whereas the Oromo are the largest ethnic group in Ethiopia and Minnesota is home to the largest Oromo diaspora population in the United States of America and the world. And whereas that on June 29, 2020, the assassination of Hachula Handase, a popular singer, Oromo singer activist, was followed by a violent response from the government of Ethiopia. And whereas the government response has been the arrest and detention of prominent Oromo activists and political leaders. And whereas they starting on June 27, 2020, Akele, Gebra and Jawar Mohammed and others have partaken an extended hunger strike, bringing international attention to the actions of the Ethiopian government. And whereas the prisoners are using their hunger strike to bring national and international attention to, to demand that political prisoners to be released opposition parties to be allowed to operate freely and practice upcoming elections and end the mistreatment of their family members and visitors by the prison officials. And whereas the Tigray, Tigray region has also been the site of a growing humanitarian crisis with the displacement of thousands of civilians, allegation, allegations of war crimes and um, millions more experience in hunger because of uh, necessary aid has been taken, has been blocked from them. And where, where is the tragedy of unfolding of, in Oromia continue war in the Tigray region and the state response in terror deeply affect the Oromo community in Minnesota and in Minneapolis. Therefore, be be resolved by the Minneapolis City Council declares its support for the Oromo community and the Ethiopian people of Ethiopia, calls the cessation of all violent and state-sponsored oppression, oppressionists and access to international humanitarian aid, the restoration of communication services in Oromia and Tigray, the release of all political prisoners and independent investigations into the crimes betrayed by the Ethiopian government. Free and fair elections, which all parties can participate, and the beginning of national dialogue, which will be invite healing and growth. Uh, I do like to invite an uh, Oromo community member who uh, will take the time to uh, let us know the purpose of this resolution. Uh, I'd like to invite Lydia. Thank you, Council Member. If our speaker has been able to join us by calling in, you will need to push star six on your phone to unmute, and then we will be able to hear you. Thank you. Um, are you all able to hear me? Yes. Welcome. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you for having me um, and for presenting this resolution here. I uh, just really want to stress the importance of this resolution and, uh, and, 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 and uh, give some context around it. Um, as a uh, council member uh, mentioned, the Ormo community in Minnesota um, is the largest diaspora population um, in, in, in the U.S., uh, but also in the world. Um, and uh, currently, uh, there's a lot going on in the country with the, the war in the Tigray region in the north. Um, causing uh, a lot, a huge humanitarian crisis amongst other conflicts. Lydia, it's very hard to hear. Country. How is it now? It's better now. Okay. Um, as I was saying, there's uh, ongoing conflicts in the country. Uh, a lot of people have heard about the ongoing war in the Tigray region um, in the north. Um, and because the country is in a very volatile situation, um, uh, uh, we're really concerned um, about the well being of Jawar Mohammed and Bakala Garba, who have been on a hunger strike now for 30 days. 
uh, we are afraid that if, you know, anything were to happen to them, um, that it could be very catastrophic for, for the country and the region and completely destabilize an already volatile situation. Um, Jawar Mohammed um, is from Minnesota. Um, his family currently resides here um, and we are concerned for his life. Um, and because the situation um, in, in the country in Ethiopia is very volatile, we're all very worried. Um, many of us um, from Minnesota and um, Minneapolis in particular have much family um, in back home and we're concerned about their safety and their well-being. Um, the prisoners are demanding very basic things, uh, just uh, the, the, the right to due process, um, to not be arbitrarily arrested, um, to, be, to end the mistreatment um, of family members that are visiting um, the prison, and to ensure uh, the reinstatement of opposition political parties' uh, licenses um, uh, ahead of the elections that are scheduled for June 5th of 2021. Um, so uh, this resolution is particularly important in raising the issue um, and creating an, uh, a more open space in the Ethiopian um, political space, uh, opening up uh, space for dissent um, and ensuring human rights uh, are respected um, and that there are there are investigations into um, atrocities that have been committed, um, particularly as we, uh, as many of you have uh, maybe seen, an Amnesty International report came out yesterday um, that uh, documents uh, a massacre that happened um, in in the city of Aksum, in the Tigray region, uh, where it was carried out by um, Eritrean uh, tr uh, soldiers who are participating in the war there. So this is a particularly timely resolution and we appreciate um, the community's, uh, the, the council's support in raising this. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, the Oromo community is appreciative of that. Thank you. May I add a little bit uh, to what uh, Lydia stated, uh, President Lisa Burns? Yes, thank you. Welcome and please go ahead. We can hear you. Okay, thank you. My name is Oksas and I actually grew up here in Minneapolis and uh, Columbia Heights. Um, um, I've, I've talked to uh, uh, Kevin um, Reich and uh, Jamal Osman about this uh, issue and they actually came to the press conference. Uh, we really appreciate uh, their uh, fierce um, stance with us. Uh, I do want to say that Minnesota is home to the largest Oromo uh, community and other Ethiopians. And uh, in, in 2017, 2018, we worked really closely with our congressional offices, uh, former Congressman um, Keith Ellison, who was a champion. Uh, that effort actually led to the passage of Resolution 128 uh, back in April 2018. Um, we want um, Minneapolis to be part of that and also continue that fight. This month is, um, you know, you know, February is a Black History Month in America, and uh, it's a month that we recognize the contribution of, um, uh, you know, communities of color to the advancement of justice, equity, and uh, respect for human rights here in, in the United States and also around the world, uh, because people like Martin Luther King is uh, hailed as, um, as a champion of uh, uh, freedom for many, many communities who are struggling, and, you know, the poor democracy movement, including in Ethiopia and elsewhere. So I think um, this Minneapolis City Council uh, members uh, vote for this resolu resolution uh, just stamps on um, what has been done uh, by um, uh, esteemed congressional uh, leaders of Minnesota supporting human rights uh, here and also abroad. I just wanted to thank you for your time. And uh, if there's any um, requests from the con council members, uh, we will be happy to provide uh, resources so that you are informed. Uh, as you know, Minnesota is um, home to many, many um, um, communities around the world because of its openness, uh, because of its welcoming environment. Uh, but the main reason that most of us came here is because of the uh, successive repressive um, practices of uh, governance, uh, particularly in Ethiopia. And we really appreciate your, uh, your time and your effort in this regard. Um, and uh, thank you, Councilman 
Jamal Osman for taking this on. And also I wanted to recognize Sean and Hamdia for uh, uh, being um, av available to us and uh, working with our community. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here to, and for both of you for sharing this important information as we connect with all of the communities that make Minneapolis home. And thanks to Councilmember Osman for bringing this forward. We will vote on this resolution a bit later in our agenda. Are there any other comments on this resolution before we proceed to the next honorary resolution presentation? I don't see any, so thank you again. Our next resolution is honoring Women's History Month. Um, and we have Karen Moe with us to um, present this resolution that Council Vice President and I will read together. Um, I'll see if the technical team can put it on the screen for us. Thank you so much. Um, so I'll read the first bit here and then turn it over to Council Vice President and um, just diving right in. Uh, this is a resolution honoring Women's History Month. Whereas Women's History Month traces its beginnings back to 1911 with the creation of International Women's Day and Congress designating March 1987 as Women's History Month. Whereas the month of March is observed nationally as Women's History Month to promote equality and celebrate women's roles in history and society. And whereas Women's History Month acknowledges and honors numerous past and present educators, scientists, activists, pioneers, leaders, artists, inventors, entrepreneurs, and elders with special ceremonies and activities. And whereas on March 5th, we will celebrate International Women's Day as an enterprise with the theme, Choose to Challenge, with, which honors the choice women have to name gender bias and, and inequities. Whereas challenging the status quo leads to change, and whereas we acknowledge that women's, the women's movement has historically left out Black, Indigenous, transgender, and women of color. And whereas we choose to reflect on those movements and challenge the narrative going forward, whereas 2021 has been an historic year for women of color, specifically celebrating the first Black woman vice president and the Black and Native women who led voter engagement efforts that led to historic elections around the country. And whereas celebrating these achievements must also be done by acknowledging that we are in the middle of multiple pandemics caused by the coronavirus, racism, and violence, BIPOC women are disproportionately impacted as they stand at the intersection of compounding barriers. And I will turn it over to Council Vice President from here. Thank you, Madam President. And whereas we know that women overwhelmingly carry more burdens in households and caring for children as there, as there continues to be a lack of affordable childcare systems, too few workplace policies that support families and school shutdowns force many women to make difficult decisions and juggle increased demands for their time. And I can't control the screen so I can't see. Uh, thank you. And whereas the women of the Minneapolis Employee Network, women, will celebrate Women's History Month with events throughout the month that choose to challenge the status quo and celebrate Black, Indigenous, transgender, and women of color by centering our events on their words and perspectives. And whereas all city employees are invited to choose to challenge with women in order to begin building a better and more equitable city enterprise. And whereas women make up approximately 29% of the city of Minneapolis workforce and whereas the city of Minneapolis leadership strives to continue to create an organization where women, especially black, indigenous, transgender, and women of color are equitably represented and thriving across departments, roles, and Whereas to support women in the city of Minneapolis enterprise, women was formed in 2017 as an employee resource group for those interested in the advancement and empowerment of female employees. And whereas women envision a working environment in which women employees are informed, empowered, and confident 
in their access to the resources they need to accelerate their careers. And whereas all women leaders, regardless of their formal roles, I'm sorry, all women are leaders, regardless of their formal roles or leadership positions. And whereas women offers women, city employees, lean in circles for peer support, networking opportunities and policy resource group and whereas women um, it moved and I got a little bit uh, confused okay um, whereas women envision a working environment in which women employees are informed, empowered, and confident in their access to resources they need to accelerate their careers, and whereas all women are leaders regardless of their formal roles or leadership positions, and whereas women offer women employees lean-in circles for peer support, networking opportunities, and policy, and a policy resource group, and whereas women will offer City of Minneapolis recommendations on action steps to support women employees in the city's workforce and develop their diverse, diverse voices and needs in city initiatives. Can you move the screen, please? Tech team. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the mayor and city council do hereby commemorate the achievements of women and their role in the development and history of the region and the nation. And we will join in recognizing the annual celebration of Women's History Month. Past this day, February 26, 2001. Thank you. Thank you, Council Vice President. Ms. Mo, if you are with us, would you like to add anything? Good morning, Council President Bender. Uh, yes, actually, I'm here with Cheyenne Brodine, and on behalf of women, we just want to say uh, first, thank you, Council President Bender and Council Vice President Jenkins and the entire council for taking time to uh, bring this resolution forward. Um, uh, I just want to say, I think at a time when um, we have so much work to do in front of us, it's especially important that we remind ourselves to take a moment to take a breath and to celebrate everything that we have accomplished in the past year in particular, as we saw uh, historic and systemic inequities just exacerbated by multiple pandemics and the burden that women and women of color in particular bore. Um, but we are especially excited uh, after we take a moment to breathe, uh, to move into the month of March and to come together and to honor the accomplishments that we've had as we also continue to challenge ourselves as women and to challenge the system so that we can build a better system and a better community moving forward where all women are supported and valued. And so we just say thank you on behalf of women for the resolution today and we look forward to seeing all of you as we come together in March. Thank you so much. Thanks to both of you for all of your work and leadership. I've had the chance lately to meet with the different employee resource groups at the city and um, I just want to highlight as we've highlighted and honored Black History Month and now as we're moving into Women's History Month that our staff, um, our, our Black staff, our staff of color, our women staff, our women of color staff in particular are carrying so much for the city right now. They are carrying their regular jobs, they are carrying the additional jobs that have come from furloughs and wage freezes. They are carrying the weight of the injustices that we have highlighted in these various pandemics, um, the coronavirus and racism and misogyny. And I just, I just want to say, um, as I've said privately, that you know we are all here, standing together with you. And I think as policymakers, we see it. And we have some tools that we can use to address it, but we also need to just take the chance to hear from our employees and work together to make sure that we are really understanding what's going on and how we can how we can really address it from the policymaker level. Of course, not being involved in the day-to-day -day operations um, like our staff are. 
So just thanks for your leadership, and I just want you to know that your voices um, matter. I've said the same to the other employee resource groups as I've met with them, um, and I know all of us stand here um, ready to think about how as we enter this next year, um, we can make sure all of our staff are supported. Council Vice President Jenkins. Thank you, uh, Madam President. And I too want to just offer my gratitude and thanks to um, the leadership of women um, and, and their work and efforts in pulling this, um, this resolution together. Um, I think it's really important on this um, sort of historic day and not sort of, it's a very historic day. Yesterday, the the House of Representatives uh, moved forward the Equality Act, which will bring, um, if it passed through the Senate and signed by the president, will bring much needed protections uh, to LGBTQIA Americans. Um, and I, I just wanna highlight that in the resolution, the women uh, employee, resource group uh, is highlighting um, women of color, transgender women, um, black and indigenous women as um, and centering those voices in, in Women's History Month. And it, it's just, you know, a, a symbol of the progress that we continue to make around um, equity and uh, inclusion for for uh, around all people. And so I want to acknowledge that, you know, not only are we just recognizing Women's History Month, but we are centering those marginalized voices within that community. Um, and to me, that's a step towards um, full equity and um, inclusion. And so thank you. Thank you, Council Vice President. Like the last resolution, this one will be approved later in the agenda. Is there any other comment or discussion on this resolution? Thank you again um, to the staff who came to help with this presentation. Um, that concludes the honorary resolutions. Uh, I'll note that we've been joined by Council Member Gordon. After some technical issues getting in the meeting, welcome. Um, so, as I mentioned earlier, Council, or sorry, uh, Mayor Fry um, will not be attending the meeting to give the in-person report. We have a written report that we've received and filed. We do need to amend that resolution to ratify the local public health emergency. Um, so this um, ratifies the emergency regulations that have been issued by the mayor so that they continue in effect throughout the duration of the declared state of emergency. There have been two regulations issued by the mayor since our last meeting. So those items are now before us to include in amendments as amendments in the standing resolution. I'll, I'll recognize the clerk um, just to, uh, to see if you could summarize those two resolutions and see if there's any questions. Thank you, <clears throat> Madam President. Uh, the mayor has issued uh, emergency regulation 2021-1. This essentially rescinded an earlier regulation that had been issued last year, number 17, which related to rules specifically on bar areas within restaurants, nightclubs, brew pubs, craft distilleries, tap rooms, and other indoor spaces. And so that prior regulation had been rescinded. And then he also issued emergency regulation 2021-2, which is related to the use of special COVID-related leave for first responders subject to two federal laws that were passed last year. So those two emergency regulations were issued since the last council meeting, and as you indicated, Madam President, are before the council as amendments to the standing resolution related to the local declared state of emergency. Thank you. Are there any questions on those amendments? Seeing none, is there a motion to adopt those? So moved. Second. Clerk will call the roll. Council Member Reich. Aye. Council Member Fletcher. Aye. Council Member Schrader. Aye. Council Member Osman. Aye. Council Member Cunningham. Aye. Council Member Ellison. Aye. Council Member Goodman. Aye. Council Member Johnson. Aye. Council Member Palmasano. Aye. Council Member Gordon. Aye. 
Council Member Cano. Aye. Aye. Vice, Pre Vice President Jenkins. Aye. President Bender. Aye. There are 13 ayes. That carries in those matters are incorporated as amendments to our emergency resolution. With that, we'll we will proceed to the reports from standing committees, beginning with the report from our Business Inspections, Housing and Zoning Committee, presented by the Chair, Council Member Goodman. Good morning, Madam President, members of the Council. The Business Inspections, Housing and Zoning Committee is bringing forward nine items for approval this morning. Item number one is the Elevator Conveyance Device Ordinance. Item two is approving an application for a new taqueria bar at 47th and Nicollet. Item three is an application for uh, a new on sale beer and strong beer and wine license uh, upgrade at Cedar Inn. Item four is a certificate of appropriateness. Uh, item number five is a bond issuance at 15 East Grant Street. Item number six is the 2020 Emergency Solutions Grant Supplemental Funding Recommendations. This is awarding money to the Aliveness Project, Housing Link, Vale Place, Youth Link, uh, for um, rapid rehousing, as well as a joint powers agreement with Hennepin County to administer this funding. Item number seven is an extension of our Minneapolis small and multifamily loan program for five years. Item number eight is a rezoning uh, for optimistic partners. And item number nine is the occupancy requirement for accessory dwelling ordinance. Everything is fine at my house. My dog is choking apparently. <laughs> I'm going to move items one through nine and then note that there is an amendment on item number one which has uh, been passed out to everyone on the committee. This would just essentially allow should the state have a shutdown would allow the city to take over this work so that there would be no interruption of service. So I'm moving items one through nine with item number one and its amendment. Councilmember Goodman has moved the committee report. Is there any discussion? Councilmember Gordon. I just wanted to um, express my appreciation for the amendment. This was an issue that came up at committee and I think this was a good move. And so I, I didn't support this item at the committee, but I will be supporting it now. Thank you. Any further discussion? Seeing none, clerk will call the roll. Councilmember Reich. Aye. Councilmember Fletcher. Aye. Councilmember Schrader. Aye. Councilmember Osman. Aye. Councilmember Cunningham. Aye. Councilmember Ellison. Aye. Councilmember Goodman. Aye. Councilmember Johnson. Aye. Councilmember Palmisano. Aye. Councilmember Gordon. Aye. Councilmember Cano. Aye. Vice President Jenkins. Aye. President Bender. Aye. There are 13 ayes. That carries and that agenda is adopted. The next committee report is from the Policy and Government Oversight Committee presented by the Chair, Council Vice President Jenkins. Thank you, Madam President. The Policy and Government Oversight Committee brings forward 11 items today. Item number one refers to the Charter Commission um, potential charter amendment related to rent stabilization. Item number two is various appointments to the Capital Long Range Improvement Committee. Item number three is a resolution establishing the 2021 Local Board of Appeal and Equalization. Item number four is information regarding the 2022 through 2027 capital budget process and approval of the net debt bond resource levels. Item number five approves the settlement of an officer conduct lawsuit in Habso Khalif versus the city of Minneapolis. Item number six authorizes the police department to enter into mutual aid agreements with other law enforcement agencies. Um, and I should note the committee sent this forward without recommendation. Uh, item number seven is related to the Minnesota State Public Disaster Assistance Contingency Account. 
Item number eight is the 2021 Emergency Rental Assistance Program. Item number nine authorizes contracts with community organizations to engage service providers for public safety, communications, and engagement services related to the upcoming trials of the killing of George Floyd. And number 10 is the acceptance of a grant from the Minnesota Department of Employment and Economic Development. And item number 11 is a resolution supporting the Aromo uh, and Tigre communities in Minneapolis. Um, I do believe that my colleagues would like to separate the vote on different parts of items number one separately. So I will pull that item for a separate vote. It's the same for item number six um, as that item was sent for without recommendation. So with that stated, I will move approval of items two through five and seven through 11. Thank you. Council Vice President has moved items two through five and seven through 11. Um, I do so. Um, well, I'll pause and see if there's any discussion on those items. I, I do wonder if um, I know we've gotten a few questions on item nine and it. So we could either um, take those up now or um, pull that in addition to item six. I'll, so I'll just pause and see if there's any questions from or discussion from council members on the items that council vice president has moved, which does include item nine. OK, I don't see any. So then I will just quickly ask um, Mr. Ruff, who I think we've identified as the best person to answer um, just briefly, Mr. Ruff, I wondered if you could um, describe um, some of the background behind these contracts um, in item nine, which are related to community grants as the city prepares for the trial of Derek Chauvin. And I just think just um, a brief description of the funding source, the purpose of the grants, and a little bit of the timeline. Sure. Um, Madam President, uh, members of City Council, I'm Mark Croft, the City Coordinator. Thank you for the time and opportunity to explain. Um, on item number nine, um, in both item number six and number uh, item number nine are authorizations of contracts. Okay, so that's the item in front of the council in each of those cases. Um, behind that, it would be the question of where is the funding going to come from for those contracts. And so for item number nine, we do have $1,050,000, which is uh, authorized for the health department and specifically the Office of Violence Prevention to enter into contracts related to the trials and in both the trial upcoming and then potentially the trial later on this year. Um, those contracts are expected to be with community groups, could be neighborhood groups or nonprofits. And um, as early as this morning, talking with uh, the director of the Office of Violence Prevention indicates that a, a request for proposals in a very informal way will be out in the next week. And we expect those contracts to be in place by the end of March, um, well in advance of the, of the time of the actual trial commencing, which is expected to be March 29th. So the anticipation is that those contracts will be around um, de-escalation and increased uh, community communication through those groups. Similarly, we have $131,500, $131,500, which is allocated to neighborhood and community relations, which also will be emphasizing communications, especially on cultural radio, through social media influencers and making sure that we get the word out about what's happening with the trials and what the options are for community to, to engage and particularly communities um, um, who are not use, utilizing maybe the city's website or the other traditional media sources where there will be um, information also disseminated. So that's the item number nine specifics in terms of the authorizations. As far as the funding source, you know, our, our um, right now we are, this is out of budgeted dollars, but with the understanding that both the health department and 
NCR have relatively small budgets. And so if there are not savings or other revenue sources that come to offset this, that later on in the year, we will be coming to council for contingency allocated. And this is our general fund overall contingency that's used for snow plowing and any other unexpected costs um, that we would be um, likely to be allocating contingency later on this year to the health department and NCR to cover these costs. So that's item number nine, Madam President, happy to answer questions on that specifically. Thank you, Mr. Ruff. And um, I think we noted on Wednesday, but I'll repeat here that there will be a briefing for the City Council starting at 10 a.m. on Monday that goes into some more specifics about preparations for the spring with the Chauvin trial. Um, of course, coming into May, we will be at the one year anniversary of the killing of George Floyd. Um, you know, I'll I'll note that, you know, my understanding of these contracts is that we know that um, as our community is processing the um, workings of the trial, we know it will be live streamed, which is an unusual situation. So people will have a lot of access to seeing what's happening. Um, we already see groups in a volunteer capacity stepping up and helping communicate um, and facilitate communication with members of our community. And this is, I think, the city acknowledging that a lot of that work is going unpaid and that the city should step up and provide resources to help fund that. Um, I think we always, when we're communicating about this, need to acknowledge the harm that was caused by the city in the first place from George Floyd's death, from actions by our police department that followed. And so I think um, we also understand that not everyone in our community trusts the city as um, as a as a communicator and that we are all working to acknowledge that harm um, as a way to help our community move forward. So the, uh, those are just some reflections based on some questions and feedback that I received as one council member. I'll see if there's any other comments or questions on the items that Council Vice President moved from the agenda before we return back to item one. Seeing them, clerk, please call the roll. Council Member Reich. Aye. Council Member Fletcher. Aye. Council Member Schrader. Aye. Council Member Osman. Aye. Council Member Cunningham. Aye. Council Member Ellison. Aye. Council Member Goodman. Aye. Council Member Johnson. Aye. Council Member Palmasano. Aye. Council Member Gordon. Aye. Council Member Cano. Aye. Vice President Jenkins. Aye. President Bender. Aye. There are 13 ayes. That carries and those items are adopted. That returns us back to item one. Council Vice President, I'm happy to um, just take these up as separated items uh, or I'll turn it back to you if you have any comments you'd like to add. Uh, no, Madam President, please uh, proceed. Council Vice President has moved item one in two parts. So we'll begin with item, the first um, part of item one, which uh, as I pull up my agenda is referring, so these are both items related to the rent stabilization charter amendment. We had a very long public hearing and discussion. Thank you to Council Vice President for facilitating that on Wednesday. And these are both related to the rent stabilization charter amendment. Item one is referring to the charter commission and ordinance to be submitted by voters at the November 2nd, 2021 municipal election, proposing amendments to article four of the city charter related to the city council pertaining to explicitly adding the city's authority to exercise power to control rents on private residential property in the city. Said colloquially, this is the one that would enable the city itself to initiate a rent stabilization policy via ordinance or um, um, by, by ordinance or, or a question um, on the ballot. Um, I'll pause and see if there's any questions or additions or discussion from council members on item one, part one. Seeing none, clerk, please call the roll. Council member Wright. Aye. Council member Fletcher. Aye. 
Councilmember Schrader. Aye. Councilmember Osman. Aye. Councilmember Cunningham. Aye. Councilmember Allison. Aye. Councilmember Goodman. Aye. Councilmember Johnson. Aye. Councilmember Palmasano. Aye. Councilmember Gordon. Aye. Councilmember Cano. Aye. Vice President Jenkins. Aye. President Bender. Aye. There are 13 ayes. That carries and that is adopted. Now we'll return to item one, section two. Uh, this is referring to the Charter Commission and Ordinance to be submitted to voters at the November 2nd, 2021 municipal election, proposing amendments to Article 1 of the City Charter relating to general provisions pertaining to adding initiative and referendum for the sole purpose of exercising the city's authority to control rents on private residential property in the city. So said colloquially, this would be creating, I think it's said very plainly, but this is creating the initiative and referendum process. Um, for a policy to be initiated by um, by folks in the community to put on the ballot, ballot versus the first one, which was would be initiated by the city. Any discussion on this item? Seeing none, clerk, please call the roll. Council Member Reich. Aye. Council Member Fletcher. Aye. Council Member Schrader. Aye. Council Member Osman. Aye. Council Member Cunningham. Aye. Council Member Ellison. Aye. Council Member Goodman. No. Council Member Johnson. Aye. Council Member Palmasano. No. Council Member Gordon. Aye. Council Member Cano. Aye. Vice President Jenkins. Aye. President Bender. Aye. There are 11 ayes and two nays. That carries and that item is adopted. That returns us to item six on the agenda, which as noted by Council Vice President was forwarded without recommendation. Council Vice President, I'm happy to recognize you. We also have Mr. Ralph available to help um, as we just did with item nine, explain um, very briefly for the public and council members um, some of the background on this, including funding source and purpose. Thank you, uh, Madam President, and I would invite um, City Coordinator Ruff to, to provide that um, overview. Thank you, uh, Council President and Council Vice President. Again, Mark Ruff, City Coordinator. Um, the item again in front of you is authorization of up to an expectation of around $1.5 million of mutual aid contracts to support primarily the, again, the trial that are occurring this year. I want to differentiate about this term mutual aid because it is used oftentimes interchangeably for really two very different circumstances. One is mutual aid is used um, on a weekly or monthly basis among uh, law enforcement and other, jurists, uh, other types of departments where we are lending support to other cities or County. So, for example, when the city of Buffalo had the awful shooting recently, um, our bomb squad went to the city of Buffalo. We don't send a bill for that. And typically when we receive those types of in the moment emergency assistance through mutual aid, we also typically do not receive um, an invoice from other jurisdictions. I want to distinguish that from planned event mutual aid and the city council has authorized similar contracts in the past for larger events specifically the um, super bowl and the final four um, where we had officers from other jurisdictions that came in to support activities and we asked those officers to be in our jurisdiction for a number of days and that then took them away from their um, own duties uh, and so this is a planned event mutual aid contract that is in front of you. Our hope is that the number of days that we need these officers will be very short, that it will be uh, a trial where there is peaceful expression of First Amendment rights and not um, destruction or other types of illegal activities, 
that would require these officers to be around for numerous days. And so this again is a, is a maximum dollar amount, but we are reimbursing those other jurisdictions for overtime, the time that they are sending their officers. Um, the expectation is that the funding source would be from the police department's uh, general fund. It is also our expectation that as the governor has proposed, there would be reimbursement of those general fund expenses uh, for those costs of the planned mutual aid contracts. And that is known as the, as the safe fund or the safe account. Um, that has currently not been approved by the legislature, but there are ongoing discussions. And so it is our anticipation that those costs would be covered out of that funding source. Thank you, Council President, Council Vice President. Thank you, Mr. Roth. And just for a little additional clarity, can you just talk a little bit about the source of the funds and whether or not the council is approving the contract or the the actual use of funds. I think that was a point, a source of um, um, confusion or consternation in our in our discussion on Wednesday. Council President and Council Vice President, it, at this time the source of funding is the Minneapolis Police Department General Fund. And so that is the expectation um, of what that source of funding would be. Again, our hope is, is that it's a very small amount of money that will be utilized and we have a short period of time where these contracts will be used. Um, if something happens and we don't get reimbursement from the state and there are um, a, a higher amount than what we expect today of expenditures associated with these events, then again, we would go primarily to the other parts of the MPD budget, um, which will cause stress upon that budget. Um, but ultimately, those are the sources of revenues that are in front of you today. Thank you, Mr. Ruff and Madam President. I will move for approval um, item number six. Thank you. Council Vice President has moved item six. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, I will note again that there is um, this planned uh, briefing on Monday, which I'm sure will include significantly more details uh, and questions from council members about the plans for the spring and summer. Seeing no discussion, I will ask the clerk to call the roll. Councilmember Reich. Aye. Fletcher. Aye. Schrader. Aye. Osman. Aye. Cunningham. Aye. Ellison. No. Goodman. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Palmasano. Aye. Gordon. No. Kano. Aye. Vice President Jenkins. Aye. President Bender. Aye. There are 11 ayes and two nays. That carries and that item is approved. That concludes the report from our Policy and Government Oversight Committee. We next will turn to the report from the Public Health and Safety Committee presented by the Chair, Council Member Cunningham. Thank you, Madam President. The Public Health and Safety Committee brings forward two items for approval today. The first is approving council appointments to the Public Health Advisory Committee. And item number two is authorizing issuance of an RFP for mobile mental health response. I move approval of those two items and would like to note that at the upcoming meeting um, of the Public Health and Safety Committee that we will be getting a presentation from staff around this RFP and the work that's um, being moved forward. So I just wanted to make sure that folks also are able to get more information specifically on where we are with that process. So again, I move approval of those two items. Councilmember Cunningham has moved the committee report. Is there any discussion?
Seeing none, clerk, please call the roll. Council member Wright. Aye. Fletcher. Aye. Council member Schrader. Aye. Council member Osman. Aye. Council member Cunningham. Aye. Council member Allison. Aye. Council member Goodman. Aye. Council member Johnson. Aye. Council member Palmasano. Aye. Council member Gordon. Aye. Council member Cano. Aye. Vice President Jenkins. Aye. President Bender. Aye. There are 13 ayes. That carries and the report is adopted. Finally, we have the report from the Transportation and Public Works Committee given by the Chair, Council Member Reich. Thank you, Madam President. The committee forwards 18 items today. Item one is the Phillips South Powderhorn 35th Street East resurfacing project. Two is the Special Service District Advisory Board composition ordinance. Three is the 2021 Minneapolis Open Streets, and that's approving a list of routes and dates. Four is the Metro Blue Line Extension Light Rail um, Project, and that's the Community Advisory Committee's Business Advisory Committee appointments. Five is the agreement with Excel Energy for the Twin Cities Electric Vehicle Mobility Network. Six is the agreement with the Minnesota Department of Transportation for landscaping improvements at the intersection of Penn Avenue South and Mount View Avenue. Seven is the agreement with Metropolitan Council for transit signal priority uh, for buses. Eight is the contract for uh, with Bolton and Menk for engineering design services for Bridge Nine Improvements Project. Nine is the contract event with BNL Supply Incorporated for LED street light fixture equipment. Ten is the contract amendment with Minger Construction Companies for the Hennepin Avenue Sanitary Sewer Replacement Project Phase Two. Eleven is the contract amendment with Safety Signs LLC for rental of work zone traffic control devices. Twelve is the 42nd Street East Phase One of the Luella Anderson Street Reconstruction Project designation. Uh, it also sets a public hearing. Thirteen is the 50th and France Special Service District Advisory Board. Fourteen is the 54th Lindale Services District Advisory Board. 15 is the West Broadway Improvement District Advisory Board. 16 is the bid for the Signals and Pedestrian Improvements Project. 17 is the bid for the Johnson Street Northeast Reconstruction Project. 18 is the bid for the Bituminous Mixtures, and that is accepting the low bid for those products. I move all items as submitted, Madam President. Councilmember Reich has moved the committee report. Is there any discussion? Councilmember Goodman. Thank you, Madam President. I just wanted to note, comment on item number six. Can I do that now? Yes, go ahead. Thank you, Madam President. It feels like such a heavy meeting. I just want to point out something really great that's happening with the Neighborhood Association in the city. Uh, the Bryn Mawr Neighborhood Association is working in conjunction with our friends at the Minnesota Department of Transportation to participate in their roadside landscaping project. Um, so the neighborhood has a beautiful landscaping project at 394 and Penn, and they're partnering with MnDOT in order to purchase all of the materials to upkeep this incredible roadside um, greening installation. It's a really good example of a neighborhood that came up with an idea that found the funds that did not even require city funding in order to do something that is both sustainable so that the area doesn't have to be mowed over and over again and something really beautiful which includes greening and a hedge. Uh, we often you know talk about all the things that are controversial and or uncomfortable but this is really a great thing that's happening and I know that there are many other neighborhoods working with MnDOT and other partners to do greening around the city and I just wanted to highlight this one. Thank you Madam President. Thank you. Any further discussion on the committee report? Seeing none, clerk please call the roll. Council Member Reich. Aye. Council Member Fletcher. Aye. Council Member Schrader. Aye. Council Member Osman. Aye. Council Member Cunningham. Aye. Council Member Allison. Aye. Council Member Goodman. Aye. Council Member Johnson. Aye. Council Member Palmasano. Aye. Council Member Gordon. Aye. Council Member Cano. Aye. Vice President Jenkins. Aye. President Bender. Aye. There are 13 ayes. That carries and that report.
court is adopted. The next order of business is notice of ordinance introductions. Today we have one notice as noted in the agenda. This is noticed by council members Fletcher, Schrader, and Gordon to introduce at the next regular meeting the subject matter of an ordinance that would amend the housing code by creating a new chapter 246 entitled tenant protections and adding provisions that create a right of first refusal and or opportunity to purchase for tenants and qualified developers for the sale of rental housing. Is there any discussion on this notice? Seeing none, notice is given and no further action is required. Next, we have the introduction and referral calendar. We have one introduction this morning. It is the introduction, first reading and referral of proposed amendments under Article 8 of the City Charter related to the creation of a public safety department. As the clerk described in the last cycle, this is a technical fix to correct for certain elements that were not included in the original proposal. That remains and the original proposal remains in the Public Health and Safety Committee. This action would refer the amendments in Article 8 to the committee so that the entire proposal can be combined into a single ordinance and brought back to the City Council next cycle. Is there any are there any questions or discussion from council members? We'll go ahead and move that introduction. Seeing no discussion, clerk will call the roll. Councilmember Reich. Aye. Councilmember Fletcher. Aye. Councilmember Schrader. Aye. Councilmember Osman. Aye. Councilmember Cunningham. Aye. Councilmember Ellison. Aye. Councilmember Goodman. Aye. Councilmember Johnson. Aye. Councilmember Pomisano. Aye. Councilmember Gordon. Aye. Councilmember Cano. Aye. Vice President Jenkins. Aye. President Bender. Aye. There are 13 ayes. That carries and that will be referred to the Public Health and Safety Committee next week. Next, we have an honorary resolution that declares March 2021 to be Women's History Month. Any further discussion on that item? And I'll just note, uh, there is a question about this. The uh, other um, honorary resolution was incorporated into the um, Policy and Government Oversight Committee agenda, which has already been approved. Seeing no discussion, clerk will call the roll. Council Member Reich. Aye. Council Member Fletcher. Aye. Councilmember Schrader. Aye. Councilmember Osman. Aye. Councilmember Cunningham. Aye. Councilmember Ellison. Aye. Councilmember Goodman. Aye. Councilmember Johnson. Aye. Councilmember Palmasano. Aye. Councilmember Gordon. Aye. Aye. Councilmember Cano. Aye. Vice President Jenkins. Aye. President Bender. Aye. There are 13 ayes. That carries and the resolution is adopted. Finally, we have the order of announcements. Are there any announcements this morning? Mr. Carl, I believe has an announcement. This Thank you, uh, Madam President. Uh, in honor of Black History Month, I um, didn't get myself in queue earlier, but I wanted to share that it was on this day in Black History in 2012 that Trayvon Benjamin Martin at the age of 17 was killed. His tragic death, of course, is a permanent mark on the nation's very complicated relationship with race, equity, and social justice. And at the time of his death, Trayvon was a junior at the Dr. Michael M. Kropp High School in North Miami-Dade. On the anniversary of this tragedy, I thought it was important for us to focus rather than on his death, but to lift up his memory and the legacy that has been built in his honor. And specifically to that point, Trayvon's parents, Sabrina Fulton and Tracy Martin, channeled their grief 
and what must be immeasurable, immeasurable heartache uh, to make positive change through the Trayvon Martin Foundation. Now in its ninth year of operation, that foundation provides education, training, advocacy, and related services. It includes the Circle of Mothers and the Circle of Fathers programs, scholarships and mentorship programs, and the Youth Empowerment Summits, among many other continuing programs and resources. That foundation and his parents' own personal advocacy, Tracy's mother, father, and brother have become leading catalysts for social change uh, to benefit all people. They work tirelessly to create awareness of how violent crime impacts the families of victims and to provide support and advocacy for those families. And in 2017, Trayvon was awarded an honorary bachelor's degree in aeronautical science from the Florida Memorial University in honor of the steps that he had already taken during his young life toward becoming a pilot. He was laid to rest in the Dade Memorial Park in, Mi in Miami. A memorial was dedicated in his honor at the Goldsboro Westside Historical Museum, a black history museum in Sanford. In 2017, Trayvon's parents published a book about his life and his death entitled Rest in Power, The Enduring Life of Trayvon Martin. You can find it online at most booksellers. More importantly, I think you can learn more about the foundation and the life of Trayvon Martin, which is at www.trayvonmartinfoundation.org. And you can learn about opportunities where you can become engaged, donate to that nonprofit to support its work and get information about the programs and services that it provides across the nation. So as we, the city, close out Black History Month on a somber note, I wanted to also offer my personal thanks to Fire Chief Brian Tyner and to our Intergovernmental Relations Director Fatima Moore for this challenge, which was given to all of us. I know that I personally learned a great deal about American history this month. And I also wanted to express my hope that by raising the memory of Trayvon Martin, it will inspire all of us to rededicate ourselves to the ongoing work that binds us as a people together in the pursuit of a better, more just and equitable society. All of us through our work, no matter what sector or field or industry, no matter what our position or our function, no matter where we live, it is our work and it must be about creating a better world for the generations to come, which helps us to fulfill the dream that Dr. King shared with all of us. So thank you to Chief Tyner. Thank you to Director Moore. Thank you to the council members who have also shared uh, American history with us as we open each meeting. Thank you, Mr. Carl. Council Vice President Jenkins. Thank you, Madam President, and thank you, um, City Clerk. I will just simply add uh, Black Lives Matter. Thank you, Council Vice President. Anything further under announcements? Seeing none, we have completed all of the items on our agenda. Um, a final reminder that staff will be presenting a briefing about the city's plans and preparations for the upcoming trial on Monday morning at 10 a.m. That briefing will be live streamed from the city's website and carried on local public television and will be posted for on-demand replay from the city's YouTube channel after the briefing has adjourned. Um, so folks can point uh, our residents and neighborhood organizations to that briefing. The details have been posted in the public calendar that can be found at limbs.minneapolismn.gov. So with that, and without, oh, pardon me, Councilmember Cunningham. I am so sorry. I almost, I, I have to just say that it is Tyler Johnson Day um, here. Um, so I just wanted to make sure that folks know we are very proud of our North Side um, alum here, um, Tyler Johnson, who uh, went on to the Super Bowl. So sorry to, to add that in at the very last minute, but wanted to make sure that the North Side got its, its due shout out um, uh, after the, the big win. So thank you. Thank you so much, council member, for ending us on that note. And in, in our virtual environment, we don't get to hear the two Northside council members <laughs> cheering each other on, uh, but we can see it in the chat. So thank you to you both um, for that recognition. So with that, seeing nothing further, I will adjourn our meeting. Have a good weekend. We are adjourned.